Hi everybody, I'm Phil with LS2 Helmets. I've gotten a lot of questions lately with all of the, uh, the concerns going on on planet Earth these days. Uh, I've had dealers ask how they might go about disinfecting a helmet so that uh, the next customer can try it on relatively safely. And uh, you know, the first point I wanna make is we've gotta be really careful about fear. You know, of course, when you don't know what's going on, it, it's always a little bit scary. But the fact of the matter is that probably trying on a motorcycle helmet in the dealership is safer than shopping for fruit in a grocery store where a lot of people have handled a lot of the items that you're touching. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Everything's got to stay within perspective and, and by no means do I mean uh, any disrespect to the people that are struggling with this disease right now. I, I realize how serious it is. So uh, I want to let you know I've done some research. Um, everything I tell you is my opinion. It can't be advice. I'm just not allowed to give it. I'm not a medical doctor or a scientist or anything else. Um, so, you know, it's what I would do. I encourage you very much to do a little bit of research on your own uh, and do what you're comfortable with. Uh, if this makes sense and you choose to do it, I'm all for it. Uh, but that's gotta be an individual decision for each of your businesses. So having said that, um, from what I've read, it seems that isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol at 70% or plus, uh, is a solution that will kill this virus. And I checked with our factory, and there's nothing in alcohol that will harm the helmet. So, um, you know, I've got some helmets I'm gonna show you here in just a minute where I, I rubbed them with alcohol all over the outside of the shell or over a big portion of it to see how it would affect the paint. I haven't had any problems. Again, I'll show you that in a moment. If I were putting a full face or a three quarter helmet that had a face shield, take the shield off. You know, if it's not there, it can't get contaminated. And I think most customers are gonna understand that they're gonna appreciate what you're doing. So uh, having said that, let me, let me show you some helmets and show you the tests that I've done and the results I've gotten. So like a lot of you, I'm working from home and I have to ask for your your uh, forgiveness on my makeshift work area here. If I were doing this in a store, I'd want a, uh, I'd want some sort of a platform that was uh, a hard, non-porous material. I would want to disinfect that area before I ever started. You see, I've got nitrile gloves on. I'd suggest you wash your hands according to the proper protocol, which you can find online. Wear your gloves. If I were in a store, I'd be wearing a mask. Uh, again, hard surface. I'm using an old pit board there to, to mock that up. Now, uh, again, you want to make sure you've got 70% isopropyl alcohol, a spray bottle. Once again, I'm working from home, so I had to use what I had. I would prefer a brand new bottle and I'd wash it before I started this whole process and some cotton pads. Now, I have a little problem with my camera. You know, again, it's just me here and I'm going back and forth. So most of what you've seen here has already been sprayed. And the idea is that you want to, you want to get a good misting on it. You want it wet, but not sopping wet. Uh, in talking to the factory, uh, they were, they're a little bit concerned that if you got too much alcohol, there's the potential, and it, we don't know what dyes other helmet manufacturers might use, that uh, you, know, you could end up with some discoloring on the liner. But um, I've got some I'm gonna show you here in a moment. So far, I haven't seen any, and they say if you missed it real well and let it dry, you should be fine. But you know, always, if you can, if you can test a little area or test some fabric first, that's a great idea. So I'm gonna respray this one just to give you an idea of, of how I would do it. Uh, again, I've already done this once, but you know, I just wanna get it misted, get it covered, make sure that there's alcohol on it, there's no dry areas, but not sopping wet. And then once it's sprayed, any part that might have touched the rider's face, once that's done, you're gonna set it down, you're just gonna let it dry. Now on the inside, you're gonna douse one of these pads, get it good and, and wet. This one you want wet with, with cotton. And you wanna you want to wipe down whatever the person may have touched or their face may have touched. So, you know, if they open and close the vents, you wanna make sure you do that. Uh, you can see that I'm, I'm getting it pretty good and wet anywhere that their hands may have touched. And it's not gonna to hurt to wipe down the whole thing. Um, on the inside, I'd wanna make sure that I got any breath guard like this, get up inside it, and on the inside here, you know, the chin area where they would have breathed upon it, and uh, just get it good. Make sure that you've got light on it that you can see that you're, you're getting the alcohol on the material. Make sure you get under the breath deflector here, and you might wanna take it off and clean it separately. 
but get it good and wet. And you'd probably want to reload this with alcohol as you go. But you get the idea, any place they may have touched. Now on the straps, I would probably again go to my spray bottle and just make sure that they're sprayed real well. Um, get, them, get them moist and you can see it doesn't take a lot. That's completely wet now. Hopefully you can see that on camera. And again, anything that may have touched their hands or that they may have breathed upon. Make sure you get inside and out, do a thorough job. And then once again, set it in the back and let it dry. Now you can see, I wet this down pretty good and it's already starting to dry. Uh, what I found earlier, I, I, I'm gonna show you another helmet here in a minute. Uh, it had, after it dried, it had a couple little spots that you could see there was, had been something on it. And I just took a microfiber cloth and buffed on it and it buffed right off. I think in the worst case scenario, I might take a little bit of water and just again, wipe it down and then you should be ready to go. Now there's another option and that is, uh, there are two other options. You can wash these pads. Uh, they should be washed by hand and you wanna make sure that you wash them thoroughly. I like the idea of spraying them with alcohol, even if I washed them just to be doubly sure. And then of course you can always replace the pad set. And if you're an LS2 dealer and that's the route you want to take, talk to your LS2 rep because I've got a little bit of a, a something special in that regard for you right now as well. So there you go, uh, you know, isopropyl alcohol, spray bottle, cotton pads, gloves, I'd wear a mask, hard surface, disinfect it first. And now I'm going to show you a few products that I wiped down with alcohol yesterday and just show you the results that I got. All right, so I've got some products in front of me that uh, I did the alcohol treatment to yesterday and I picked them for specific reasons. Um, you know, we've got a matte black finish here. We've got a very bright gloss finish here. Um, I did about half of this helmet with alcohol and I did a, a swath about like this here on this helmet and you can see it looks fine and here you couldn't tell any way shape or form that it's had alcohol on it now you know this is an older model that's got these uh, bright pads and you know it's an older sample but I thought it'd be a good one to use because I wanted to see if it discolored the pads and I got to tell you I, I uh, in getting prepped here, I got them crossed up. I couldn't tell you which one I sprayed and which one I didn't. And really, that's a good thing. There's no difference. I can't see anything. There's no smell difference. They, they dried overnight and they're fine. And on this helmet, I doused this area in here heavily with alcohol and that you can't see any difference between where I did and where I didn't. So um, again, I can't promise that it's possible that there would be uh, you know, some minor change or, or a change. I, I can't promise what you're using. I, I don't know what you'll be using versus what I've used here, but in my case, it's been fine. Now, again, I've got to tell you, uh, nothing I tell you here is intended as advice. We're all in uncharted waters. Um, it's only my own observation, my own research. And I, I, one more time, I've got to emphasize, I encourage you to do your research and do what you're comfortable with but I hope the ideas that I've shared with you here today are helpful. I've got a couple final comments. Um, one, I, you know, I looked at some of the footage that I shot and I, I wanna make sure I'm really clear. You know, I was holding one of the pads and spraying it. You'd wanna move your thumb and spray underneath, you know, wh wherever you've been holding it. Uh, make sure the entire surface area is covered with alcohol. Again, it doesn't need to be soaking. It doesn't need to be bathed, but it does need to be completely covered on the surface and then uh, allow it to dry completely. Don't wipe the alcohol off. Finally, there was something I intended to say in the opening uh, of the video and I, and I forgot to say it, and that is if you are a medical professional and you know more about this than we do, uh, please, I invite your feedback. We would love to know your suggestions on how we should go about this and that uh, you can send your comments to CSR at ls2helmets.us. So once again, I, I hope this is useful. Um, you know, we're gonna get through this and, and at LS2, we plan to be here when you need us. So thanks for tuning in and uh, all the best under these circumstances. Uh, again, we'll get through it.